Hi, Parker Elementary. Uh, I'm so excited because we have our uh, next event coming up very, very soon. We are less than a month out. It's going to be Art Walk, and it will be February 6th, and I'm very excited to introduce you to our artist this year. His name is Mr. Webster. He's a good friend of mine, and we're going to find out a little bit more about him, what he's about, and what kind of artwork he's going to be bringing to share with you. All right. Hey, George. We're so excited you're coming. I can't wait. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be asked to do this. <laughs> George and I go way back. We've yes, known each we other do. for a long time, but not as artists for as long. We knew, we knew each other before that, and so I'm excited to find out more about him. George, you want to tell us a little bit about what kind of artwork that you do? I am primarily an oil painter. I, that's the medium I like the most. I have done pen and ink, I have done some printmaking uh, when I was in my undergraduate degree at the college because we had the, the, the facilities there. But primarily, and I do like pen and ink, uh, I do a lot, I, I used to do pen and ink, but primarily today I, I still like oil paint as my medium, oil. Okay, great. I have never used oil, so that's very exciting to find out a little bit about it. I can control it. <laughs> I, I'm a, a watercolor does not uh, get along with me. I, I cannot control that. water, a watercolor paint. Um, I haven't. Well, I should practice more <laughs> with that. But I love the feel and the spread of oil paint, and uh, the control right. I can do with that. There are lots of artists that we've studied that are oil painters that we'll find out more about when we're talking about them at school. So that's very exciting. George, you are an artist as a hobby. Yes. What do you do for a living? I am a librarian. I am librarian at Trinity School in Midland, and I'm in my 20th year there. Wow. And uh, I love it. Yeah. I, uh, I read to the children. I uh, handle everybody from three-year-olds to seniors every day and uh, it's a fast day and I love it. Oh, that's so exciting. That's right around the corner. That's our neighbor school. And so that's good to know. I see George in the morning when he's going to work. Um, George, can you tell us how long have you been painting? I have probably been painting, um, my first painting I ever did, I believe was in high school with my art teacher, uh, was the first oil painting I ever completed. Uh, Ms. Robertson was my art teacher uh, in my hometown. She graduated high school with my mother and they were friends. And I ended up having her as an art teacher in high school. Then I studied after I graduated, I studied a couple summers with her mm -hmm. and took classes. I also own some artwork of hers. She has now passed away but I own several artworks of hers, and she was actually the, the inspiration, the person who inspired me to paint. Oh, wow. And, uh, That's amazing. So what kind of things do you paint? What is your inspiration? You said Miss Roberts. Primarily, I like Southwest scenes. I like desert scenes. I like, um, just because I was born and raised out here, I, I primarily like uh, Southwest desert scenes. Uh, I do enjoy very much uh, cloud forms. I enjoy painting clouds. I like uh, the different colors, uh, the different light, uh, light in clouds, uh, different types of clouds. I, I'm just. Uh, I love the open skies mm -hmm. and the clouds. This is a that's a good place to be here for that kind of artwork yes. and yes. see those kinds of things. Awesome. Well, we're going to take a look or well before, do you have any favorite artists that you kind of follow? I do have um, Maynard Dixon was an artist who is now passed away, but uh, he was a painter of southwestern uh, okay. Uh, and I, I, when I say Southwest, I mean desert scenes, uh, not necessarily all cowboys or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but uh, he did do some of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, Maynard Dixon was an artist 
that I liked a lot. Uh, Fremont Ellis is another one uh, that I like a lot. Okay, nice. Nice. We'll have to look at some of their artwork and see how it's inspired Mr. Webster. Well, we're going to take a look at some of the different pieces that he might be bringing to Art Walk. So we'll see some of them and then some might be surprises when we get there. But hopefully you have some knowledge of some of these pieces so that you can share with your classmates and with your teachers and your parents about some of the work that we're going to see. So can you tell us a little bit about these two pieces that are behind us. Yes, these are McKittrick Canyon in, uh, these are McKittrick Canyon scenes. These were painted years ago. Okay. Uh, they were actually painted in 1990, so these are 30, <laughs> 30 years old. Uh, back when I had a uh, film camera. Okay. And my wife and I were uh, married, and uh, we hadn't been married very long. We took a hike up McKittrick Canyon and it became cloudy and a little cool and I still took these pictures, had them printed out uh, uh, and put in a uh, uh, photo album. This was way back when we did photo albums. This is before yes. digital. Yes, before digital. Okay. And I think I had them for a couple years and, and I had an idea to paint. I had these little... Uh, stretched canvases in a in a closet okay and i finally decided i'm going to paint and so i uh i think i painted them outside on the patio and i had a little easel and okay uh, and i just picked those two and uh, now where is the Kittrick canyon it is actually in it is in texas okay it is between carlsbad new mexico uh before you get to the point of the mountain to go to El Paso. Okay, so it's There's, not too far from us then. It's, no, it's it's not too, well, okay. from our standards, it's yeah. not. It's, it's <laughs> maybe a probably. couple hours away. Okay, that's not so, bad. No. Okay, nice. And what kinds of things, when you were looking at McKittrick Canyon, inspired you to paint these pictures? I liked, I wanted to do the, I was really, concerned with a certain composition. I wanted to have the uh, uh, the trees and the, the trail in the middle. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I loved how the, the light, even though it was cloudy, there was still some sunlight coming through, uh, highlighting certain rock mm -hmm. formations. And I, I was kind of thinking I would have a blue sky, but it didn't happen. But I think those are still, I'm, I'm happy with with those, even though they were clouds. I love it. Over. I love it. I like your perspective. I think it looks good. Good job. Okay, let's look at some more. This is another one of the pieces that Mr. Webster might be bringing. Can Mr. Webster, can you tell us a little bit about this painting? This is a Maynard, Maynard Dixon uh, painting that I copied okay. uh, because I, I just liked it a lot. Okay. I, again, it's real obvious, the clouds here. This is a rolling dirt storm coming in and I know that a lot of people think, uh, ooh, ick, a dirt storm. But there is beauty, uh -huh. actually, in the, the dirt that the clouds, have, the wind has picked up, and the sunlight, it, it, it compositionally, it is beautiful. And I, I love the, the, the earthy colors, and you can still have light hitting a cliff, with all of this going on, and to me, it's, it's still a beautiful mm -hmm. uh, picture, even though I know it's a, a storm, it, it can still be pretty. I love that. We can look for beauty in all kinds of things. That's what artists do. And this is an oil painting? This is. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. nice. When you were painting this and you were using uh, Mr. Dixon's artwork, how did you 
get it from what you were seeing to here? Did you use a grid system or did you just paint it? Or? I did. I took a, uh, on the photocopy machine, I mm -hmm. printed out the picture in color. Okay. I got it on an eight and a half by 11. Mm -hmm. And then I, I made a grid, a grid across. Okay. And then I put the corresponding pencil marks on the bare canvas and very lightly took a ruler and repositioned, re I mean, reconstructed the grid on the canvas. Then, uh, now some people can just draw the thing on, but I wanted it really right. I wanted, I liked Maynard Dixon's composition. Mm -hmm. And so then I can take the, the photograph or the, the printout, and I can reproduce the drawing on the canvas, okay. and then I can start painting, and I know the position, the relation of each thing in relation to each other is the same, and will be the same. Nice. We're doing a similar project like this in sixth grade with Stan Lee, and we're okay. using the grid system, Very so good. that's great yes. that we're seeing how it can be used in real life as well. Nice. Thank you so much, George. Are there other pieces that we could see? Yes. Okay. Let's go see some more. Okay, so this is another painting that Mr. Webster has in his house that he has made. But Mr. Webster, can you tell us a little bit more about this beautiful piece? Okay. This, there is a story about this. This painting obviously is not a southwestern scene. And so I, I do want to talk about it. At another home my wife and I lived at, the dining room had a built-in bookcase and a big door going into the den, and we had painted it very dark green, the okay. wall. The bookcases were white, and the wall was green. I was thumbing through an art book I had gotten from the library, and when I came to this picture, my brain said, Wow, that's the image that I want hanging between the bookcase and the door into the den. It's like I knew immediately what I wanted. And so, again, I checked the book out, I photocopied the picture, I gridded a canvas, and in 30 to 45 minutes, I painted this outside under a tree in the shade wow. in the hot summer. And um, my wife was pretty amazed uh, that I painted it so quickly, but it is, uh, it yields itself uh, to painting uh, pretty quickly. And uh, this painting hung in that, in that area oh, nice. until we bought this house. And, uh, but this is an example of copying uh, on a, a work of another artist, but, but you want the image. I right. love the image. And uh -huh. that's, uh, that's what I wanted. So it's different. It's different than when you copy off of somebody's homework. Pablo Picasso once said, "Good artists borrow, but great artists steal." And so they get ideas from each other, and they find them and improve them. And so, George, Mr. Webster really loved the way this painting was composed, and so he took it and he stole it for his own house and made it his own in his kind of way. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Let's go look at some others. Okay. okay, guys, get ready because this one is big. And I can't wait to hear all about how Maynard Dixon inspired you to recreate this piece. Yes, this is a Maynard, another Maynard Dixon painting. I did paint this outside in the bright sunlight. Okay. I had it propped up on sawhorses leaned up against a brick wall because it is so large. And uh, there is a story behind this uh, that I'll tell in a moment. But okay. I did, the first thing I painted on this painting were the trees, the poplar trees. The second uh, was the, the uh, mountain. And then I did the small bunk houses, saving the, the main bunk house for last. And then I did the foreground at the very last. Now, here's my story. Never ever have I painted a horse. Oh. And uh, 
I wanted a horse there, but I I drew I drew the horse and I painted it several times on little gesso boards, and I kept drawing it and drawing it. When I got ready, when I got it the way I wanted, I I had it I drew it drew it there but my hand was shaking mm -hmm. because I was so nervous about, because it has the legs, the, it has to look right or you miss it. I mean, right. I mean, if you, if you do it bad, it just, <laughs> I, you almost not want to have a horse there. You just want to have nothing there. Is there a horse so, in the original? There is, okay. and I think it's drawn a little bit bigger, but I, once I got that on there, <laughs> it's a tiny horse. It wasn't hey. as big as I wanted it to be, but I didn't want to do it again. I so, love it. So anyway, and here is uh, the book that, um, here is a, thank this you. is the book, The Art and Life of Maynard Dixon, that I get a lot of my inspiration out of. Nice. And so there's a lot of his paintings inside this book, and it tells us a little bit about his paintings. And then I can see how your inspiration, remember you talked about clouds, and we can see Maynard Dixon really likes to paint those kinds of things. We look forward to learning a little bit more about him. Okay, so this might be one of the pieces that he brings as well. Mr. Webster, can you tell us a little bit more about this piece? Yes, this is another work of Maynard Dixon. Okay. And here is a representation of cloud form that I'm so fond of. I love the the colors in the in the cloud and the 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 expanse of the sky and the colors on the ground and uh, here it is actually in the book. Oh um, nice. And um, it's not exact I mean it doesn't look exactly like his but I but um it looks very close. I can see the inspiration. I can see it. Yes. I can tell that's exactly mm -hmm. what it is. You did an excellent job. Well, we're so excited that Mr. Webster is going to be with us at Art Walk. Please come and you can have some hors d'oeuvres and listen to the strings kids play. And then you can meet Mr. Webster in real life, get to know him, shake his hand, show him your artwork, ask him a little bit about his, and we're excited that we're going to see all of you there. Art Walk is on February the 6th this year. See you soon.